One more minute. I'm going to mute all lines now. So we have only the panelists have open lines. So I'm, I'm glad, again, I'm, I'm Clement Steinbach. Um, we have about two minutes to go. And I thought maybe before we get going, if you can type in your name, organization, city and state in the chat room, it would be lovely to hear uh, where, um, where you're calling from. And as part of this initiative, you want to create a community of learners. And by getting to know each other a little bit, um, that would be great to see. The chat room is a box located on the right of your of the slide that you see, and um, and be sure that it says send to, and it should say all participants, so everybody can see where you're calling. Your call, Steve. So we get going in about two minutes. Um, again, this is the uh, kickoff webinar for our Ant Disparities Learning Exchange. We are glad that you all could make it. Thanks so much for typing in all the different locations. Great to see. We have east, west, the uh, west coast, north, south. Wonderful to have so many of you on the call. It's um, that's my reminder. Um, it's uh, one o'clock um, here Eastern, and I think in the interest of time, while you're still keeping in, we want to probably get going with our webinar. And it is my welcome to all of you to our kickoff webinar and a warm welcome to all of our participants. Um, on behalf of the National Quality Center, we are excited to announce the kickoff of our newest initiative, um, the Ant Disparities Learning Exchange in partnership with the HRSA HIV AIDS Bureau. In short, the Learning Exchange is a nine-month uh, initiative that really promotes the application from quality improvement um, interventions to really reduce HIV disparities. Um, and also, while we are also building a community of learners among the Ryan White recipients. Uh, my name is Clement Steinbach. I am the director of the National Quality Center, which is housed here at the New York State Department of Health AIDS Institute. And I'm uh, happy to facilitate today's calls. And you also see that we have a, a whole wonderful group of panelists who help us to respond to your questions. So I want to encourage you to post any questions in the chat room for all participants to see, and then our um, consultants, staff, and also we are happy to have, um, have representatives and our panelists to respond to questions that you might have. So without um, further ado, I want to, it's my great pleasure and honor to introduce the Associate Administrator of the HIV AIDS program. Dr. Laura Chiva, she's our persistent and tenacious leader of the Ryan White program, and she has been a supporter of quality improvement for over a decade, and we are happy to have her on the call, and we are very honored to ask her for her opening remarks on behalf of the HIV AIDS Bureau. So without further ado, um, and I also want to thank Dr. Chiva for, be, for taking the time today for being on the call. Dr. Cheever. You may be on mute. Um, unfortunately, I cannot hear, hear you as of now.
And Tech Receiver, this is Emily. Your audio may be disconnected. We don't see the telephone line next to your name. Um, you may want to try to dial back in. We're unable to hear you over WebEx. If that's okay with you, um, Emily, we're going to get going and we're going to recycle. And if you can just let me know um, when you see Dr. Cheever coming in, and I'm, I'm sure she will um, speak up if that's okay. Uh, maybe we can try one more time. Dr. Cheever, can you hear us? Uh, we'll, be happy, we'll be glad to have you speak up now at this point for your opening remarks. Okay. I think we are having a bit of technical difficulty with Dr. Cheever Clemens, so I will flag you when she's able to reconnect and we can just pause there. I know that her and Antigone were excited to offer some opening remarks, so Wonderful. I apologize to our participants for our technical difficulties, but just bear with us, we'll get to the bottom of it. Okay, so just, just interrupt me and then we will um, take it from there. Um, sure thing, thanks Clemens. So I wanted to quickly um, set the tone, what we have in for the next uh, 90 minutes. We have about 60 minutes worth of content that we want to present. And then the last half an hour, uh, which will be uh, around 2 p.m. Eastern, uh, we'll probably have our Q&A session. For those of you who want to stay on for the 30 minutes at the tail end to ask your questions, and there will be more an open flow. Um, what do we want to achieve through this um, webinar? We want to give you a little bit of an overview of the literature review that we have conducted, um, and it is about HIV disparities. We want also to um, introduce it to our learning exchange, give you an overview, give you a little bit of the framework, the timetable. And the third thing we really want to accomplish today is just to have a brief introduction to the exchange tools and resources that we, we saw, that we developed. And we want to give you a quick over uh, introduction to them. And at subsequent calls, we're going to introduce them in, in further detail. This is just a quick reminder um, to write your questions into the chat room. As I stated earlier, our panelists are standby to answer them. And uh, we have muted all lines. Um, and uh, please use the chat room actively. Um, it's your way to ask questions. We actually were going to stop throughout the webinar at certain points, and we will ask the panelists to summarize some of the questions, comments um, that you might have. Um, Hi, Clemens. This is Emily. Just to jump in, Dr. Cheever is dialed back in, and her line was muted upon okay. signing in. So if you could unmute her line, she's prepared to deliver Wonderful. opening remarks. Wonderful. Just give me one second here till I, I just have to find her here. Uh, sorry for that for the delay. Um, just give me one second here. I just have to find it. Clemens, you're an early adopter of this technology, so we should expect some bumps in the road, right? <laughs> I'm sure we'll. You know, I don't see her. Um, do we know uh, which of the presenters? If did you check under, I think she's under presenters, not attendees. I see her right under Kevin's name. Okay. Um, there, it's not, her line is not. Yeah, she there. is there, but she's not on the phone unless she dialed in with another number, in which case she'd be in the guest thing. So, Dr. Cheever, okay, if you. Okay, so it would be the 443. If you can figure out what number may be the most appropriate number, and then I can unmute that individual line. Okay. 443 yeah, uh, can you say the number one more time for me? Sorry. 443-3067. I don't see that. 301-443-3067. Hold on. 301. Six. Yep, I, I see it. There's, there's two 301-443s. Okay, yeah, we'll go with those. Okay. So, Dr. Chiba, do we have you on the line now? Hey, can you hear me now? 
Yes, we hear you loud and clear. Yes. Oh, Yay, I sound, I I sound like a certain <laughs> commercial. Sorry about that. I'm not promoting any one cellular service. Uh, Hi, uh, yeah, sorry about that. I think, uh, anyway, the new technology, what can I say? So uh, thank you very much. I was able to hear you all the entire time. Okay. So first, I want to thank everyone oh. that's taken. <laughs> Yes, I want to thank everyone that's taken the time to sign on here today and find out more about this important new initiative. Certainly we here in the HIV AIDS Bureau and I think all of you that are working every day are sensing that we're really at a pivotal time. We have a great opportunity right now in this epidemic. There are jurisdictions that are really changing the course and bending the curve of their HIV epidemic. We have done a lot of great work in the RIO program. You all have significantly improved viral load suppression in the last few years. You've reduced disparities among multiple populations. Um, so we know it can be done. Uh, we've been doing great work. Um, on the other hand, I think what we've been doing, some of what we've been doing is really getting at that low-hanging fruit. And I think that now we're at we're at sort of a new era where we really need to hone in on what we can do to really close the gaps for specific um, populations where we have continued disparities. Um, in alignment with the National HIV AIDS Strategy, the End Disparities Learning Exchange is really seeking to address those HIV-related disparities in populations most in need, specifically MSM of color, black and Latina women, transgender people, and youth. I know all of you are interested in reducing these disparities, and really when we look at the literature, uh, the amount of evidence-based interventions that we know are going to help us improve um, those disparities is relatively limited. So uh, we are really excited about this new opportunity, working with the National Quality Center uh, to uh, sort of crowdsource and learn together about best practices and what is working in different pop amongst these populations so that we can reduce those disparities. Um, so I want to thank you all very much for your commitment to, to ending the epidemic. Thank you. Thank you so much for your words of encouragement, and we are uh, looking forward to have a, hopefully a very successful initiative, and thanks so much for the partnership. Um, I want to keep um, just a quick reminder um, about uh, the National Quality Center. We are funded by the Ryan White program um, uh, since 2004, and we provide a myriad of services. And um, so we have, and I think it's really worthwhile pointing out, that this learning exchange is really an extension of these offerings, whether it is to participate in our monthly webinars. And just a quick plug, um, on October 27th, a week from today, we have our 2016 NQC Quality Award winners um, presenting their um, programs, and hopefully you can unlock from that. We also have um, our training programs. We provide on-site consultation, as well as our various activities related to communities of learning. Um, I think it's really worthwhile pointing out that over 90% of all recipients have access to NQC services and participation in these activities have been linked to stronger clinical quality management programs as well as better health outcomes. So what we do want to do next is to really dive into the literature review that we conducted over to last year. Um, we will provide a very brief introduction. Um, you can find a detailed literature review on our enddisparitiesexchange.org website. We also developed a slide set that is based on our literature review to really facilitate a further diffusion uh, in the programs. Please use the slide set, um, adapt them to your own needs, and um, play with them a little bit. And so we really wanted to focus um, so today will be a very brief introduction to really better understand the need to our focus in addressing disparities in HIV care. Um, I want to start out with a quote uh, by Martin Luther King. In 2013, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention had a really important report out about disparities. And Tom Frieden, in the introduction in that report, cited the, this quote um, that you see here on the slides that all forms of all the forms of inequality, injustice in healthcare is the most shocking and inhumane. And Tom Frieden really used um, this quote to really as the, to set the tone for the report. Many of you are familiar with the national HIV strategy. As you know, that includes four goals. 
not only in addition to reducing infections, increasing access, and improving health outcomes, and also to achieve a more coordinated national response, the third goal relates to disparities. And I think it's worth pointing out that a lot of things have been done um, for the other goals, but it's always really pointing towards this important goal and national priority to really focus on disparities. Um, there are a lot of definitions out there, so we wanted to just present one to you. And if you read through this definition, it becomes very clear that um, a population in the health disparity occurs when you really look at one subpopulation um, and compare that to a, a larger group. Um, in our case, um, in HIV care, it is really focusing on one subpopulation and compare that to the, the entire population um, in your community or those served by your programs. We also conducted an online survey um, early this year, and many of you were actually have participated in, and we had about over 300 individual responses, roughly have a 25% of all recipients responded to our survey. And the key question was here, A, do you think that health disparity and focusing um, among vulnerable subpopulation would be relevant to you? And about 85% responded um, affirmatively to that question. But also that would you participate in a community of learning activity? And about 87% said that they would be um, willing to participate. So I'm glad that so many of you um, found this topic as being relevant and an important area that we as the Ryan Wright Program should focus on. Um, we early on looked at uh, what should be the subpopulations we want to focus on. We clearly recognize there are many subpopulations that are worthy of further focus. Um, we wanted to identify four groups and that A, the literature find them as being a subgroup um, where we can put our resources and improvement efforts against, but also to think about what are listed in the national HIV strategy. And also we conducted several informant interview. And so we wanted to focus in our anti-disparities learning exchange on the following um, four groupings. That's the MSM of color, African-American and Latina women, youth, which we define as 13 to 24, as well as transgender people. We clearly recognize there are many more issues that could be a disparity, behavioral issues, mental health, substance use, insurance and housing. Uh, we thought that to get the ball rolling and the availability of data sets, that we want to start with those, and hopefully we can learn a lot of lessons learned to apply at uh, future improvement efforts. So let's dive into the four groups in a little bit more. And um, here's just several statistics that we put together um, that probably highlight the need for focusing on those um, four groupings. And as you can see on the slides here that young people are five times more likely to have HIV than um, their index group, that the black women are 20 times more likely, men who have sex with men are 46 times more likely to have HIV, and transgender women are 50 times more likely. Let's um, focus on each of the subgroups a little bit more in detail. Um, and the first group that I wanted to focus on in this brief overview of the literature is on the disparities among MSM of color. Um, at the conference on retroviruses and opportunistic infection, CROI, um, the CDC released several statistics, and for the first time, they looked at the lifetime risks of being diagnosed with HIV. And um, I think I wanted to actually pose a question. So let's see whether that works. Um, I actually have a poll, and when you should see on the right on your screen on the poll, uh, you may want to pull this up that we wanted to know uh, the following question. Um, the lifetime risk of an HIV diagnosis for a white MSM is 111. 
what you believe is the risk for a black MSM. I'll give you about uh, 15 more seconds or so. Um, this is an unscientific poll, but one uh, we'll see. So about five more seconds, and then I will um, I will show the results and give you the, the following answer. But two more seconds. So as you probably can see um, that, actually I don't see on my own results here. So um, by 22, if I got this right, uh, had one in two. And in fact, that is the correct answer, that the lifetime risk of a black MSM to be diagnosed um, with HIV is one in two. In other words, um, out of two black MSM, one will be diagnosed with HIV in their lifetime. So to use that core study that was presented by the CDC, you see here the black MSM is one in two, and the risk for being diagnosed with HIV in the lifetime is one in four for Hispanic MSM. When we look at the viral load suppression rates and we look all at the care continuum, the framework that we are all very familiar with, and here is the comparison between viral load suppression rates among the um, black MSM community versus the white MSM community. Um, we see here that the white MSM um, rate is roughly about 34%, and we and the black MSM is roughly about 16%, which basically means that the black MSM are 47% less likely than the white MSM counterparts to achieve viral load suppression. Let's move on to the, to the next group. And I wanted to um, talk next about the disparities um, in uh, African-American Latino women. So let's uh, pull up the next survey. So you see here the, the question should come up. The question is, the lifetime risk of an HIV diagnosis for white women is one in 880. What is the risk for African-American women? We'd love to hear from you. Give you about 15 more seconds. So let's see what you come up with. Um, The result indicates that uh, the majority of you, it's the answer B, and in fact it is, it's one uh, in 48 is the lifetime risk for African-American women. Um, here's just a visual display that the, the, the risk is one in 880 white women. For Latina women, it's one in 227, and um, as we saw, is for African-American women, it is one in 48. So we do know from the, um, from the statistics um, that 13% of the female uh, population are African-American women, but 62% of new infections are among women, um, uh, African-American women. And that's a really important, so the African-American women bear a bigger burden in terms of the number of new infections. Let's talk a little bit more about the, for the disparities among uh, youth. Um, again, as I stated earlier, they are in the age group of 13 to 24. Um, we know that one in five of new diagnoses were among persons um, age 13 to 24, according to CDC. Um, let's do another quiz here. Um, so the third poll that should come up now, um, the question is, in the U.S., what percentage of youth, 13 to 24, with HIV are unaware of their infection? It's A, B, or C. Let's see what you come up with. About 15 more seconds.
So you see the result here in the box here. Um, the, the correct answer is 52% are unaware of their HIV infection. I think there's a cre clearly a great need for us to focus on that group. Um, particularly if you have a further breakdown by the different groups among the group of youth, you realize that the black youth aged um, account for about 63% of all new infections among the youth category. And, uh, and so also the black only uh, comprise only 14% of the U.S. population. When we look at the care continuum, and this is a, a paper by Zanoni, um, 2014, and he looked at the HIV care continuum uh, in the HIV-infected youth. And he came to the conclusion that the suppression rate is only about 6%. Um, we know that the average rate is roughly about 30 35%. But for youth, it is, according to this study, closer to 6%. Let's look at our um, last group about transgender individuals. So this is my last quiz. Uh, let me just pull this up here quickly. So the question is, the overall HIV prevalence in the U.S. is estimated to be somewhere between 0.4 to 0.9%. What is the estimated HIV prevalence among transgender women? Again, I will give you about 30 seconds and would love to hear what your response is. We'll have five more seconds. So the, the correct answer is C, is about 28%. And I think that was really one of the striking statistics that, um, that we found that really was an important part to really make it one of our uh, four subpopulations that we want to focus on as part of our um, anti-disparities learning exchange. Here's just the numbers um, in, in a different format that um, it's one in 250 um, odds of having HIV as an adult of reproductive age in comparison to one in five of uh, odds of having HIV as a transgender woman. In other words, that transgender people are 40 times more likely to acquire HIV than other adults. Here's the question about access to um, life-saving medications, in our case, ART treatment. And there's clearly a um, difference between the cohort of transgender women who have access to ART treatment, about 60%, and compared to 82% for um, their control group. Um, we, this was a very brief um, overview about the literature that is available. Um, we, you should visit our antdisparities.org website. Um, Maybe, um, Emily, you can type in just the website just one more time in our chat room. So it's antisparitiesexchange.org. You can see our literature review, but you also can see the slide set, as I mentioned earlier, if you want to do a presentation within your program. And we also will use the slide set um, for um, in future presentations when we are focusing on the four subpopulations in our upcoming webinars. Um, disparities um, affect us all, and, um, and the second quote, that health equity benefits everyone, came from Kathleen Sibelius. She, as many of you know, she was the Secretary of Health and Human Services. In one of her speeches, she um, pointed out that health equity benefits everyone, and I think that's something they should um, keep really in mind. So I'm going to stop here, take a quick breather, and let's uh, hear from our panelists about any questions that were generated so far or any other reflections you have at this point. So Clemens, this is Marlene. How are you Emily. today? Oh. <laughs> Oops. I think we both were going to jump in with the same thing. Um, we had a number of folks who just signed on, Clemens, and said hello and where they were from. Uh, at the last check, uh, just about a minute ago, 
We had 298 people registered uh, to join this webinar and, and were active, which I thought was a great, great uh, showing of our community. Um, other than some folks having a couple of uh, hiccups on trying to get in on the audio, we don't have any other questions. Okay. Wonderful. Yeah, you can tell you can tell how excited Hab is in support of this venture because Marlene and I were jumping to the microphone to talk to you on the line. We're up to 302 attendees. Wonderful. Thanks, Marlene, and we'll just invite you guys and reiterate that if you have any questions throughout the webinar, both Hab representatives and NQC coaches and staff are at the ready to answer your questions, and then when appropriate, we'll share those out at various parts of the webinar as we move forward. So feel free to bring the questions and. We'll share and answer as best as we can. Wonderful. Thank you. So as many of you, those of you who joined our In Care campaign, know that we actually had a video at the very introduction of our last campaign to really set the tone, introduce the topic of retention. And over the last six months, um, we developed our end disparities video and you can find that video, it's about three minutes, and um, it is on our antisparitiesexchange.org um, website. You can find it there. I would encourage you to view the, the video, maybe to download it and bring it to your staff meetings. I think it sets the right tone. So we want to do something. I'm not sure that technology will help us, but um, I will quickly switch the screens we may not be able to see the whole video because of the sound quality, but I want to give you a little bit of a sense what this video is all about. Um, and um, maybe I'm playing about three minutes long, but I play probably the first 15 seconds or so. So without further ado, the, the first showing of our video. gave you a little bit of a, a little bit of uh, the um, excitement to uh, look at that video. Um, we want to thank our colleagues in with at Impact to really help us to put this video together, and uh, hopefully you can show this video and show um, and take a, a further look. It is posted on our website. If you just go to the home page, and you can see it right there. So we're going to switch gears a little bit um, for the second half of our webinar. We're going to talk more about the learning exchange, what this is all about, what's your role, what you can do, what you can learn. So the first part is just what is the learning exchange. As introduced earlier, um, it, it is a nine-month initiative that really looks at, um, at the application from improvement strategies, your PDSA cycles, to really work as a community to look uh, and work toward reducing HIV-related disparities. Uh, we want to focus on the four subpopulations that we identified, and we also want to build a community of learners among Ryan White programs. Um, we are providing um, informational opportunities. We have webinars, and we're going to talk about them a little bit more. Um, and we have content experts. We have a wonderful group of spokespeople that we, we are so happy to work with. And we also want to utilize the power of peer learning by really having the stories and your successes um, to really be um, noticed and seen by others. So what does participation look like? So um, all Ryan White recipients across all parts are invited to join. We're happy to, it is a nine-month initiative. It's a voluntary participation. You can think of it as a la carte um, participation. Take as much or as little as you want. We would love to hear what you're doing through our webinars. But um, it is really uh, based on our webinars, our partner in care, and our different tools that I will introduce um, in, in a minute. 
we want all the participants to identify one of the four subpopulations. We think that um, you may have more than one, but I think for the, for the next couple of months, we really want you in the early stages of, of thinking through about the um, end disparities exchange, about what is the one subpopulation you want to focus um, on in terms of your improvement resources. And um, we want you to really encourage you to use as many um, of the learning exchange tools um, to really meet your own goals. Um, I pointed out already our website a couple of times, so the website is live and, and, and running. Um, as the website will indicate here, we have on our website only um, about our events, so all our upcoming webinars are already listed there. You can pre-register for them, you can um, see the intervention grid, you can, and we also share all the different things about the um, anti-disparity exchange can be found on our website. We are offering uh, monthly content webinars. Um, we have we have the fortune of, of working with national content experts, with stakeholders, and our spokespeople together to really hopefully have a very content-rich um, calls where we want to focus on the different aspects of disparities. We're also providing office hours. Those are held weekly. Those are very informal discussions with NQC staff and consultants. Um, to hear more about your questions in case we didn't answer those. Those call, office hours are held on, the, on every Friday. Um, they're usually at 1 p.m. Eastern for about one hour. We also um, developed in, in anticipation of our launch date different resources that we want you to utilize. We developed a disparity calculator, which basically helps you identify which of the four subpopulations you want to focus on. We also developed an in intervention grid. We looked at the literature in terms of evidence-based and evidence-informed interventions, and we made that available in addition to literature, which I talked already about. Many of you have already accessed our NQC Share Lab, which is an online platform to post your interventions as well as to access what other folks are doing. So we're going to really make the NQC Share Lab a really a, a central portal for knowing what's going on around disparities. And lastly is we also want to help you um, to develop a poster presentation at the end of our improvement journey to really let others know within your organization and across your region and the country to know what you have done regarding the addressing disparities. So the screen may be a little bit small for some of you, but here's the outline of our webinar. So there's an arc to our webinars. We start obviously today with our kickoff webinar. Uh, and the next November, December, we'll really introduce the various tools um, that we developed, so introduce a little bit how we can work together. Um, and then starting in January, we will have a content focus on each of the four subpopulations, we're going to dedicate uh, once a month on one of the topic, one of the groups that we want to look at. I'm very happy to have our um, spokespeople to really facilitate that discussion. And before in May and June, where we really want to think more about sustainability, and probably uh, in June we want to have a final um, share fest of our successes throughout the country and. We let others know what you have done. We also developed a, a social media presence. Um, we, as you can, as many of you know, we have our Facebook page at National Quality Center. Happy to have you there, as well as we have our Twitter account, and we're going to use the hashtag at Disparities. And so we have started to actually have daily posts going around and introducing tools. Um, please. Uh, Join us on those um, social media platforms. Um, and very quickly about the various structures. So as you know, we have um, our spokespeople. And I think, there, I think there's a slide about here about our different um, groups. And we're really so happy to have eight individuals um, to be part of our planning group that are very instrumental about thinking through where we want to go. And we, we recognize their uh, wonderful contribution. Uh, many of them are on the call today, and you will hear a lot more from them in subsequent calls where we'll 
they will really facilitate many of the activities. We also have a technical um, working group that is we, we, have, we had the pleasure of meeting in September in Rockville and um, to really hear more to provide guidance and content expertise about where we need to go with our um, learning exchange. We also have a planning group that meets internally and as well as our partner in care, which is really the consumer related um, component. We recognize that providers need to do their share as well as, the, as our consumers and the partner in care really targets our consumers and they will have uh, monthly webinars. And if you go on our website, we have a tab dedicated for that activities. This is just a recognition of our technical working group uh, members um, and wanna thank all of them for their wonderful meeting we had and for their continued support. Um, in addition, um, we also have a monthly newsletter. Um, you probably, many of you probably got our monthly newsletter as uh, to announce the kickoff of the, this initiative and you will see probably many more. We have once a month where we'll send one out. And um, we also want to bring this activity and embed it in our various offerings in NQC as they relate to the regional group or technical assistance. So we, we worked a lot with our consultants to let them know what's available. We hope that they can bring those tools um, regionally and locally to you as well. Hi, Simon. This is Emily from the HIVAs Bureau. I just wanted to pause and take a moment to orient people to the WebEx platform. Underneath the participant list, you'll see a hand icon. I just want to invite all of our participants that were a part of either a technical working group or are serving as spokespersons to raise your hand. Um, these individuals on both the technical working group and the spokespersons, I think, are going to be our subject matter expertise and are really invested to help orient how we're moving forward with this End Disparities Learning Exchange. And so we're really relying on them as well as you to help keep this um, content and material, you know, mission driven. How are we meeting the needs of what you want to learn and how can we share that back to you in the best way possible over the next few months? Thank you, Emily. Do we have any questions about the framework, anything that came up in the chat room to our panelists? Any any question that, that came up a little bit? We talked a little bit about what um, webinars we're excited to see uh, moving forward. Uh, we have Valley that's excited about our um, African American and Latina women webinar, and Julia had mentioned how excited that she is about learning more about the spokesperson. Mm -hmm. For those of you that were involved in InCare campaign, this is a new and exciting component of this End Disparities campaign that we're really um, looking forward to being a part of and really capitalizing on that information and how we can really learn more from our spokespersons uh, about each of the populations that we're going to take a deeper dive and learn more about. Wonderful. Um, and I'm seeing quite a bit of hand raise um, in the participant list. So thanks everybody for raising your hand. And for those of you that are new to the Learning Exchange, just take a peek at um, who who is in the webinar audience amongst you and who we may be hearing from moving forward um, over the next couple months. Wonderful. Thank you, Emily. So let's talk a little bit some of the tools that we wanted to bring and to you and have a quick introduction. The next month's uh, webinar will be focusing on the disparity tools. So today I want to just give you a brief overview of what they are. Um, the first one is our disparities calculator. Um, it is a tool that we that we developed um, in conjunction with the um, Bergen Basic TGA, which is in New Jersey, and we were very happy to really work with them to do to develop um, this Excel spreadsheet that's pre-programmed to make it very easy to enter your data, performance data, for each of the four subpopulations. And this tool, actually, by entering the data, gives you a sense of what disparities occur and what significance they have. And it really would help you um, to figure out, so which of the four populations should I put my efforts? And, and I will give you a quick a screenshot um, how that looks like and what some of the data tells us. And also in addition, on th the tool is already available um, on our website on the tools and you can look, at, look them up already. There's also a series of PowerPoint presentations 
to get a little bit more familiar about the tool, a little bit about the background. So I want to start out with by giving you a very simple table uh, that you can see here. And the question is, and usually that's a table very simply done um, that many of us are familiar with. The question really is, can we simply detect the disparities among those four groups across two measures just by looking at those measures? And it is very hard for us to really come and say which are, is really a disparity because of all the different numbers and measures. And by entering those, in this case those are eight data points, but into our disparity calculator, you really can see where the disparities um, actually are and take that as a discussion tool at your next clinical quality management committee meeting. So here you see a screenshot. So the upper part, uh, labeled number one, you see here how our disparity calculator looks like, and you see here there are no data entered. That's really the only eight data points in addition to the total caseload um, that you have that's obviously empty once you open it up. And then what you need to do is you just basically enter here the data point. So I took the table that was generated in the earlier slide and we entered it here. That's really the most important data entry. And let's see what the results are for that pool. If you go under the tab for viral load suppression, you see here on the top about the four groups that we have identified, transgender people, MSM of color, African-American Latino women, as well as youth. And you can see here on the in all the groups that it appears that in the youth there seems to be a disparity. We have identified four different disparity measures. Um, they are based on case law and, we, and they give you different information looking from various angles about disparities. And again, this is just a discussion tool. Um, you may want to bring that information back and decide which of the groups uh, may be worthwhile pursuing. And for the second, which is the medical frequency visit, and you can see here, um, it tells it a slightly different story using the same data we just entered earlier. So it may help you to really figure this out very quickly by entering those data points about where you need to go. The second tool that we want to bring as part of our um, toolkit is the intervention grid. Again, as I mentioned earlier, it's um, drawn from the evidence-based and evidence-informed interventions. And I think I have a screenshot here. One is a very simple um, data grid. It's probably too small to see, but we identified uh, several dozen of interventions that have been well documented. And we broke them down either by population, so you can identify, I'm looking at transgender and see which intervention may be relevant. You can also look at viral load or retention as in terms of the, what that's your focus. We also categorized it in several um, groupings and also where the data are coming from, whether it's part of a SPINS initiative, whether it's part of the literature review that we found. And lastly, we try to estimate the costs and put a dollar sign next to it to give you a little bit of a sense in terms of their financial burden that by introducing that new intervention. These interventions have been also integrated in, into our website. So if you go to um, antisparitiesexchange.org, look under interventions, and then you can see a similar breakdown, whether it's by population, by measure, and you can play around. You see the information listed, and here you just see two um, screenshots. We talked already about the Share Lab as a mechanism for um, we want to get basically your information, what you're working on, and entering your interventions, your QI project into this uh, platform. You see here, this is, this is a highly interactive page, so this is obviously a flat um, picture here, but once you click in one of those um, buttons that is here now a light blue on my screen, it actually opens up, and as you can see here, and once you're here at the end point, you can actually click here and once you click on the final intervention, you actually can see what the um, Ryan Wright recipient has done, what they worked on, and if they agree to your, the contact information is actually listed. So you can actually contact them and say, hey, you know what, I heard you use this um, tool and I want to hear more about it, and therefore you can um, um, really utilize it. I mentioned this earlier today oh. that the power of peer learning is going to be a critical ingredient for our um, 
power initiative. And the last in our toolkit is we believe it's really important to diffuse your improvement strategies to let others know within your program as well as regionally. So we developed a templated QI poster that we will make accessible um, and that we will probably introduce later in, um, in this initiative so that we would like you to fill out if you want to and um, share it with us so that can, can also be the basis for our webinars and it will be a one-page summary of what you have done. It's really for the purpose to learn what are the lessons learned, what you're working on, what your data telling you, and then others can learn from you. So the video, um, probably hopefully we, if we have time permitting and we will see whether the technology would allow it to actually play later on the you know, webinar, the, the full video. But it's really important that together we can end disparities in HIV care and we hope that uh, this gives you a little bit of a, of a sense what this learning exchange is all about. I'm going to stop here a little bit and turn it again our, for our panelists. Are there any questions, thoughts, ideas coming up from our, from our participants? Hi, Clement. Uh, this is Emily again from HAB. We've got a couple questions about the interventions that are being posted on the website, whether or not they are all evidence-based. We have um, mixed methodology for our inter, um, interventions, so it's evidence-based, um, EBI's, EBI's evidence-based interventions, as well as other types of interventions. They are um, clearly labeled on the website. Um, just going up to see other questions. We did have some feedback I posed to the chat room. If anybody was excited or if they felt a little bit nervous about the disparities calculator, and we got a couple of people that were very excited and a couple of people who were looking forward to some technical assistance, um, to which I responded, have no fear. Our next webinar is all about technical assistance related to the tools for the learning exchange. And don't forget that if you feel as though your questions aren't answered at that webinar, we will be hosting office hours to be able to meet, the, meet your needs and answer any questions that you may have about any of the tools and resources. Um, just buzzing through right now to see if there are any other questions. Any other panelists get any other questions? So Kimberly uh, said she's curious to see if the disparities calculator confirms what we see are the drivers of disparities in our community. Um, it's not necessarily going to tell you what the drivers are. It's when you enter your data into the calculator, it's going to point to which um, of the communities um, have a disparity. So it's not going to tell you that un those underlying factors. Um, I'm trying to read them as they're coming in, Emily. Uh, uh, Deanna, I'm just going to paraphrase. This is so exciting. I can't wait to start the data analysis and the toolkit looks so helpful. I appreciate how this looks like a complete QM package with everything we need for QMC and stakeholders. That's, that's perfect. So I'm really excited to get that feedback, Deanna, and we're getting a lot of other great feedback about individuals being excited. Um, so I think that this is great and we'll be able to learn through this together and then just another plug for that share lab space. There were a couple questions about how um, participants will be able to compare, um, use an air quotes here, compare themselves to other members of their state. Um, while the share lab is not set up individually by state, you will be able to kind of look around in the share lab to see other feedback, successes and challenges with specific interventions. It does allow you to drill down and filter by state um, if for that level of specificity, but we just kind of ask that you really just look at the share lab based on successes and challenges and feedback from the specific interventions and then go down to that level about the state. So I just want to also just kind of pop in there. Um, we got sort of a, a, a little bit of an endorsement from Maria. She went to the session at the Ryan White conference where the disparity calculator was presented and they walked through it in a little bit more uh, depth. And she said that it, uh, she was saying that it, it, it's going to be tangible, uh, a tangible product that you can use in your daily work when working on disparities. So I think that, you know, just kind of rings, uh, you know, to me that 
Um, I know Clemens presented a lot of information in a short amount of time, and I think when you have uh, the opportunity to, you know, really play with this and get your hands on these tools, I'm, I'm hopeful, and I think we're all hopeful that you're going to see their value and, and how, um, you know, fairly easy they are to use. And just one last logistics note, I see that some people are having trouble sharing um, chat pod responses with all participants. They're limited to just host, presenter, and panelists. So if you see that and you're unable to share with all participants, just feel free to go ahead and respond, and Marlene and I will do our best to share um, your feedback with all participants. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So this is Clement. I was able to read so some of the comments being made either privately or to the panelists. And what the question one I want to respond to very quickly is, and the question was uh, posed by Elaine about will the calculator work even if it's a small sample? And the answer is it will work. Um, it actually there is a certain um, measure in there in terms of recognizing what is a small sample and make adjustments in terms of indicating whether it's red, mentioning it's a um, statistical significant finding or not. So it works with the samples, um, um, but it obviously the strength would be different. And, and in some cases, it may not be able to find any significant disparities, but I think the only way you can figure out by entering your data. Um, that was one comment. Um, the, also, I think a related question was, can I, do I need to enter a certain number of patients? I think you are better off by entering as many data as you can, meaning among those four groups, numerator and denominator, as well as your entire um, caseload. I do know that um, the, um, in our um, calculator, the, it's really important. I mean, obviously, the more data you enter, the more it becomes very meaningful to you. I've visited several um, cities and state departments. And what we actually sometimes we did, one of the first activities prior for me to come was, can you actually pull up the data from your system? And I'm going to a TGA um, next Monday, and they actually sent me their data uh, in terms of all patients um, that had access to at least one service within the TGA, and we plugged the data in. And we also plugged in the data in our disparity calculator for those patients who have at least one medical encounter. And the data are incredibly helpful and meaningful, and on Monday when we have our quality management committee meeting, I think it will really help us and point us in the right direction where we need to do. And then, uh, I don't know if you saw this one, uh, I know it's getting a little cart before the horse, but I think it just shows the level of excitement uh, folks are having, Clemens. Uh, Sandra had messaged us, messaged us and asked how she registers for future webinars. So if you go ahead and you um, go to the enddisparitiesexchange.org website, you'll see uh, the calendar um, of events. So there's a tab for events at the top. You can go in and go and register for uh, any of the webinars that are coming up. Commons, I think that's our cue to move forward because I think that is our next step that we're about to unveil on the upcoming slides. That's uh, very good. So the next item is that we want to talk a little bit, so what is the next step in terms of one of the next webinars? So let's point out that we want to start our office hours tomorrow. Um, today was a really more of a one-way communication, and so tomorrow we have an opportunity um, that is on Friday, October 21 at 1 p.m. Eastern. Um, dial in, dial for our webinar. You can go to Anti Disparities Exchange, look under events. Um, you can just dial in and webinar. You can answer any all questions. Uh, we're going to have only about a few slides just to set the tone, and the rest will be just back and forth in terms of what you want to talk about, how we can um, explain in further detail what this webinar was all about. And then we will have them weekly, as we stated earlier. So the next one after that is October 28th. On our website, there's an event calendar. All the dates already entered. Sometimes we put even a certain content area in so you can know which one are most relevant to you. The next webinar will be held in November. That's November the 17th at 1 p.m. And that's um, our setting the baseline disparity data. That's really looking again talking more in detail about the disparity calculator, which we believe is logically a first step to do. So you find your data, you enter it, you figure out where you want to focus on. And we also will have next, um, on November the, the 17th, next month, 
our first partner in care webinar, which we'll be following at 2 p.m. And we will see following notices going out, and we hope that you can find the time to join us at that point. So how to register? Um, this was already mentioned earlier by Marlene. Just go to our events page. There's also the, um, the function that you can um, go in and actually add them to your calendar. Um, it may work not necessarily for all calendars, but if, it, if it's helpful to you, um, hopefully that, that's um, a helpful step. You see all the different um, dates already listed with all the information already listed. So we tried to plan ahead as much as we can. You see the topic focus already. And, um, and to the extent that we can, we try to pinpoint already what we want to cover for the office office hours or so early on, we probably go a little bit with the flow. Um, yep. Christine, or Clemens, uh, we got a comment from Christine, and she was asking if we're uh, going to post um, a discussion from the office hours. Uh, I don't think we actually thought about that, um, but if folks are interested in something like that, you may want to put that in the evaluation for this uh, webinar or maybe even put it in the chat room. Okay. Because it might be that you might not be able to attend, but, you know, you might be interested in seeing sort of what the discussion was. Yeah. I think yeah, uh, Christine, uh, I, well, go ahead. I, I just responded to Christine that that wasn't something that we had really thought of, um, but we could probably offer or provide feedback at the opening of each webinar from the um, previous office hour, something you can think through. So a little bit of quality improvement in action. I got one question just to clarify um, that the times that we used on our slide sets are all Eastern. So we have to be sure that on the website they all, they all refer to Eastern Standard Time. And I think we can go ahead and probably do a little update on the uh, website just to be sure about that folk, so folks are clear that it's Eastern time. Yeah. So um, I wanted to, it's the top of the hour, so what we're going to shift a little bit um, is to really open up the lines. We'll see how many um, we have, we can look through. Maybe, depending on the number of people, we can try to unmute all lines and see, and then you can speak up and hear your question. But uh, we wanted to really end the, this first part of the webinar really about the quote that really becomes paramount for our initiative, which is, ending disparities will end the HIV epidemic. And your participation uh, makes a wonderful contribution to, to this goal of really about ending the epidemic. So, um, can I ask you, Emily and Marlene, so when you saw the video, how was the quality of the video, and do you think it would be worthwhile to show the entire video, or should we go straight to our Q&A session? So, I will tell you that I didn't think the video um, quality was the best. I think it's much better if you go onto the YouTube and view it. Um, you know, I'm really impressed with the video, and I think it's uh, uh, rather, um, uh, you know, kind of gets your attention. And I would, I would really encourage folks to go to the the uh, the YouTube and take a look at it. And Clement, I put in the chat room, and you may want to comment on this as well. With the InCare campaign, we had a number of folks who actually used the video when they were recruiting people or, or really trying to garner support for their activities in the campaign last time, you know, sort of that introduction to the campaign and that why are we doing this sort of message. That was a really, that was a great use, I think, of this video. I think it's to raise the awareness around disparities, to make it a discussion point, to show it in your next quality committee, to show it to, at your next consumer advisory board. I think it's a, it, it includes a little bit of some of the statistics that we mentioned, but I think it also makes the case of what we can do. At least it can be a discussion um, creator of, of, of thoughts, ideas, but also can um, excite people about the prospect of ending disparities by focusing on disparities. Hi, Clement, it's Emily. I have two questions in the chat room. Can you remind uh, folks how to be a part of the office hours tomorrow? Question. So um, when um, when you go 
to our anti-disparities website, um, which I just did. So you go to antidisparitiesexchange.org, and you click under events, and then you click event calendar. You see on the, all the different activities that will occur from now, and you see here um, on October 21, there is one um, anti-disparity office hours, that's October 21, and if you click on it, it will actually open up. Maybe what I can do, um, let me just do this very quickly. I will share my screen. That would be helpful, Clemens. And yeah, then sure. also we're hearing from individuals that they're having some trouble or getting an error message when trying to register for upcoming uh, webinars. So um, duly noted, we will go back and try to correct that technical error. Uh, perhaps NQC could send an email out to participants on this webinar um, when that error has been resolved. That's wonderful. So yeah, uh, can I just quickly clarify, um, Emily, you can see my um, internet browser, correct? Yes, I can. Okay, so this is our Ant Disparities website. So just to quickly show you, if you go down here, you see the video, um, that's just, uh, you can just access here. If you actually need the file, we can share that with you um, if you go to a place where there's no internet access. So in order to register, you can go here under events, and it will, and then you can see here event calendar. You can also enter by population or by different events. So if you click here by event calendar, you actually can see here all the different activities that we have scheduled. Um, and today is obviously our joining our kickoff webinar tomorrow. So I just click here. You can see here um, the events um, or the further detail regarding the office hour for tomorrow. And then, um, Tomorrow, I think we have no registration. That means you can just join us. There is a meeting URL. Um, I don't know if you can see this where my cursor is going back and forth. Um, you can just click that link. If you just know the meeting number password, you can just join us. Today was registration because we want to take a little bit of stock where everybody's coming from. So the um, end disparities does not require prior registration. Just join us and um, we will talk a little bit more about the different activities that we're offering. So go to our events page, just go to the, uh, open the event, and then just join us at 1 p.m. Eastern. Great, thank you, Clemens. Sure. So what we also gonna... got a question. Sure. Oh, oh, I was gonna pose you a question. Sure. we're gonna go into the Q&A now. Uh, we got a question for Christine in the chat pod. She said, is the result of the disparities calculator the only input for selecting the subpopulation? That is a great question. Um, I think I see that the disparity calculator is one of the tools you wanna to utilize. I think in addition, and if you saw, let me just go back very quickly to our disparity calculator results page just to give you a little bit of a sense. Um, so hopefully you see this now. Um, in addition, let me just clear up a little bit of my annotations here. In addition to the measures, you also see how, what's the absolute impact that may influence your decision. Or we noticed in the data that we generated, those were um, not real data, um, that on the viral suppression that the youth seem to be a disparity. But you also wanna have a discussion about how many patients are affected in each of the subpopulation. As you noted here, that youth has about 25 um, individuals that could benefit from the intervention. If you look at other groupings, um, MSM of color, you potentially could reach up to 40. Um, you may, in a way I see this tool, it gives you a first glance of what you wanna focus on, but as a, I think it's a good discussion tool that will help you. I would bring it back to your leadership, to the quality committee, and discuss together about where, what decisions you need to make and what is the one focus you want to use. In perspective of data analysis, that's the one tool that we want to promote. But there may be others that you have and access to. Thanks, Clement. Any other questions, comments? Um, hey, Clemens, this is Jane. Can you hear me? We hear you loud and clear. Okay, great. 
I just noticed there was a, a comment from Marcy, and I had the same thing, um, and I think it might just be something on, on the websites. And uh, I did notice that there was a high number of non-responders to the questions, to the polling, mm -hmm. and um, I had the same problem Marcy had. I couldn't, it wouldn't let me okay. pick anything. So I'm not quite sure why that was. Okay. okay. Thank you for letting me know. Um, Any other questions, comments? I don't see anything else in the chat room at this point, Clemens. Okay. This is BJ. I, I will ask this one question. I know the focus is on these four populations. Will there be information presented that if uh, certain uh, facilities, uh, grantees don't have great numbers of these uh, groups in their populations where they can apply the information to other populations to work with them so that this would still have value for them? Thank you, BJ, for the important question. I think that the focus, uh, we want to reduce disparities. And the fourth subpopulation that we offer is probably the first groups that we commonly think about. The tools are adaptable to other tools, such as disparity calculator can be adapted for other disparities as well. And I think, you know, use it. Um, the intervention may be a little bit harder, but if you look through the intervention grid, there may be others that would be applicable to other groups. As part of our content presentations, those will really be focusing more on the four groups that we identified. But I can see there's value of looking through the tools and see the applicability to other groups that you may identify. At the end of the day, I think that working um, the four groups or any other group is really an important step for all of us to, to, to look at and reduce disparities. Thank you. Sure. I got a question from Catherine. Um, will the slides that are presented today available on our on your website? And the slides should be on the website already. So if you go under the um, learning exchange, um, maybe I, if you go under the event that um, under events the ca the calendar, and if you click on joining the end disparity learning exchange, the slides will be um, are, are posted there already. Um, the other option is if you want to quickly send us an email in the chat room, we can certainly send the slides to you um, very simply. But they're right on our website, on the antidisparitiesexchange.org website. From other, other panelists, any other questions that came up that you think would be worth pointing out? Hey, Clemens, we got a question about will the webinars be archived? Yes, um, we will have the recording we will make available. Um, hopefully we can do this in a quick turnaround. And they, uh, we will have already in our, uh, we have we already thought about where to put them. And what we thought also in our newsletter will come out in November, we're going to send a link uh, where to find the last month's webinar so you can go back and uh, send it out to other folks who couldn't join today. I see several emails already coming in about the slides. Um, so just uh, put your emails in, and we're going to send it right after. So um, uh, um, Emily, um, Jenny, if you can, can take care of the slides, sending out that would be appreciated. I saw one question from, um, the question was, to take advantage of tomorrow's office hour, um, would it be helpful to have data prepared? And the answer is yes. What you can actually do is to actually download the, the Excel spreadsheet, plug in the data, and see what actually what, what some of the results. It's very intuitive, so if you're not afraid of computers and not afraid of Excel, I think you can do it fairly quickly. And um, so, Yes, if you have the data, that would be great, and maybe we can use you as an example how you did it, 
and um, how helpful it was. And this is Emily from HAB. If you don't have data available or if you're coming to the office hour for another reason, please don't hesitate to join us. Um, the purpose of tomorrow's office hour is not just specifically about the disparities calculator, so we're happy to review other questions and resources and keep in mind that our next webinar on November 17th is going to take that deep dive into all of those resources. So we knew that everybody was going to be really excited about the disparities calculator, so bring your questions if you have them, but know that we have a dedicated time to that coming up in the next month. So this question is for Clemens and uh, Emily for the office hour tomorrow and then also future office hour. Let's say that perhaps for tomorrow, I don't have, I'm not gonna have my data ready for tomorrow. Can I still come and listen to what other folks are talking about um, during that session and, and maybe kind of you know, hang around the periphery and not really uh, engage in the conversation? We welcome all of you who have the time, the, the interest to join us, whether you can contribute, whether you just wanna listen in. Uh, oftentimes we learn more about those who are uh, who want to just learn a little bit more. Um, so join us. Uh, we can you can just be basically just listen in, listen in mode. Tomorrow we'll probably uh, open up the lines earlier. Uh, maybe you just want to introduce yourself, but we welcome any and all of you to to try to to hear a little bit more, and then we can um, hear what your questions are, and then hopefully you can learn from the answers that we provide uh, the questions by your peers. Do we have, from our other panelists, any other questions or any other points worth making to be sure that they are well communicated? Clemens, this is Julia. I do see some people um, in the participant list who have question marks next to their name. Mm -hmm. Not sure if they are able to uh, input their question into the chat room. Okay, okay. Okay, so um, I see here several of them. So what I can do is let, let's try this, and if it doesn't work, then I will, I will unmute all the lines, and then we can see, and then um, hopefully the, it will be a manageable uh, number um, and see what, what happens, and if it doesn't work out, we're gonna um, mute the line. So I'm gonna unmute all the lines. <laughs> Um, I see several question marks next to your names. So, so all the lines are open now. It, we would be happy to hear your questions you might have about, and if we have not answered as of yet. So I see Adrian, um, Beatrice, and others have a question mark next to their names. I think we may have answered those questions already. Anybody else who has any questions, the lines are open. So if you want to ask us any questions regarding the learning exchange, we are happy to answer them now. Otherwise, we will continue tomorrow at our office hours. I'm Nelson. I hear you can hear me. I, 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 I wrote in the questions. I can't do it to all participants, but to panelists and then to you, but I guess it didn't go through. I'm wondering how um, multiple disparities will be dealt with um, in that, as you mentioned at the beginning, there's more than just those four disparities. But for example, for youth who are youth of color, who are transgender, and for living in rural areas versus metropolitan areas, there's documented um, you know, disparities. So I'm wondering how that, that if, if at all, other than descriptive statistics at the end of who was measured, is gonna be dealt with. So, um, John, thanks so much for your question. I think that, that's one. I think you want to use the uh, lines and then answer the question, just be sure so everybody can hear me. So, um, so, John, thanks so much for the question. So, it is one of those questions that, that it, we are certainly recognize that any of the four groupings in your ex, uh, example, a trans woman can also be um, a, uh, in the youth category. 
we certainly recognize that, but in terms of our, um, we leave it up to you how to best do that, whether you want to count it in one or the other group. I think the important part is for us that you think through how you can categorize them. We want to start with those four groups, so your question about rural versus metropolitan, it will be for us a very hard thing to do for now, so therefore we just wanted to use a simpler approach for the four categories. Um, if you want to count them in one or the other category, I think you want to locally think through what makes most sense to you and to your population that you serve. Do we have any Do we have any other questions? The question I saw here from Judy is can you post the YouTube video file? Um, the the if you go to YouTube or and or exchange.org website you can see the video. Um, we probably have to figure out a little bit how, if you need the file, how to get it to you. We can just use like a Dropbox kind of approach to, um, to, to send it to you. Let us know if you need the, the video file rather than just using it off the, off the Internet. Hi, Clement. It's Emily from HAB. Can you share the best contact information if individuals would like to reach out to NQC with questions about the learning exchange? Okay. I think the best way to get in touch with NQC um, regarding this exchange as well as others is info at nationalqualitycenter.org. That, uh, that goes so centrally to, to us and then we can triage the question that you may have. So it is um, info at nationalqualitycenter.org. That's really our central depository of your question. Um, you can certainly send um, me any emails at clements at nationalqualitycenter.org, and I'm happy to answer your questions as well. Jesus asked a question about um, whether we have a Spanish version of the video. Uh, we don't have currently, uh, but we can certainly explore the options with a little bit what we can do about this. But it's currently not available. Any, any other questions? I wanted to take a moment here to um, thank um, all of you for participating. I know that we made the transition to the Q&A session, but I wanted to just highlight that we, we will send you um, after this uh, webinar an email that will give us a quick survey about what you thought about this call and how we can make adjustments to upcoming webinars. And I also wanted to um, express our special thanks to various groups, and one of them I want to start out with, uh, with Emily Chiu, who is our project officer at the HIV AIDS Bearers for being a supporter, and Marlene Madoski as well, for really helping us to develop and be part of our planning group. We're really happy to have you. In addition to our NQC staff, led by Dr. Bruce Agins, uh, Michael Hare couldn't make it today. Um, he, he's out but he will certainly um, take the lead for future um, webinars. And a whole um, group of staff that we had, um, particularly Emily Chen, who is on the phone as well, um, and we're, we're really happy for all the contribution of our staff. I also wanted to thank our spokespeople. Um, you will hear a lot more from them in the coming months. They really are, at some point, the face of our um, exchange, and they will be front and center as well as our technical working group, big thanks, as well as to our impact marketing colleagues in D.C., with Sarah Cook Raymond and Courtney and many others who really helped us to develop those um, wonderful um, different services that we are providing here today. Um, I wanted to thank everybody for participation. 
And if there are no more questions, we will officially close this webinar for the day, and we will continue our dialogue tomorrow for those who want to join us. Otherwise, we will have our next webinar on November the 17th at 1 p.m. So thank you so much. And uh, Emily, any, any closing comments from you? Uh, on behalf of HAB, the HWA Bureau, I'm really thankful to each one of you for taking the time out of your Thursday afternoon or morning for our West Coast friends to join us today. I'm really excited about the excited that you're showing to be a part of this initiative, and I'll look forward to speaking with you tomorrow on the office hour as well as the upcoming webinars. Great. Thank you so much, and uh, the last slide will be our contact information that you, either our phone number and the, our internet, or as well as our email address at info at nationalpolicycenter.org. Thank you so much for your participation.